And I believe that God is teaching us, showing us, molding us, and shaping us who he is through his praise. Because praise is the celebration of who he is to invade in our life. The Bible says that God inhabits in the praises of his people. When his people praise, God shows up. Where there's no praise, God's not there. But where there's praise, God shows up. Yeah. Yeah. I inhabit in the praises of my people. So praise your name for your loving kindness and your truth. Then it says something very profound. It says you have magnified your word above all your name. Say all your name. All your name. How many of you guys know God has a lot of names? God has a lot of names. Amen. How many of you guys know God has a, has a lot of names? See, you might have a couple names. Amen. You might have the name you got from your parents, your government name, and then you might have your street name. Amen. And just the thing about a name is that a name deals with the nature of a person. In the Old Testament, you never named your son or daughter something that was cursed. You only named them something that was blessed because they understood a mystery that the name deals with the nature. Whatever you name it, it will be. Amen. Right? So the name deals with the nature, but the nature deals with the definition and the function and production of that name. It's really important that we understand the names of God. But who are we to define God? I heard this once and it said, in, 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 in our best intellect, it is an insult to truly try to define God and his divinity. Because our words are so, are so little compared to the true divine nature that he truly is. But in our attempt to define God, we are able to get access to his nature. Amen. That's why God cannot just have one name. He's so big. There's so many things that he does. He is so mighty. He, he is so glorious. He is full of majesty. He is the creator, the ancient one. He is so big. 